Deepak Dangi, The Path to Creator. So, uh, uh, yeah, so I think it's as architect, we need, we need to be demonstrated about what we do. Unless we uh, walk the talk and you know, don't do what we preach, you know, people are not really going to listen to us. <clears throat> Hi everyone, my name is Dean DeCruz and I'm sharing my little journey with India Art and Design and hope you enjoy it. So yeah, so um, we need to be models in terms of uh, lifestyle change. So I've been driving these small electric levers uh, for the past uh, 10 years and, uh, and it's extremely painful because they don't go very fast, they don't go very far. So you, you suffer a lot along the way, but you, at least you demonstrate that you know, this is the way to, you know, we should go. When I drive the car, of course, you all feel very sorry for me. So the signal is just let me go. <laughs> so, so it's, uh, <clears throat> but it's, it's interesting because I think by demonstrating that yes, you know, that we can do it, you know, everybody else can also you know, do it. And, and yeah, there are some pain points in, in trying to change your lifestyle, do so for free, uh, but it's well worth it. So uh, I started off uh, almost 40 years ago. I mean, we worked actually as, as low-cost architects in a, in a very baker style. And uh, as uh, we got popular, we of course switched into larger homes, uh, hotels, uh, institutional projects. Uh, but generally, it's been it's working with uh, more natural materials. In fact, at one point in time, we called ourselves natural architecture. And uh, we're trying to revive traditional uh, methods you know, where we're, we're creating livelihoods for people uh, with the local materials, local uh, building techniques. So overall, I think, I mean, besides uh, uh, being in practice, I've also into uh, academics. I've been a design chair for a few colleges on the uh, board of studies, the senate for uh, a number of other colleges. Conducted workshops in different uh, institutions and been on juries uh, for various kinds of. So for me, it was it was actually uh, getting to know to deal with uh, with with clients, and then eventually understanding materials. Luckily, we, we built a lot of the uh, the buildings that uh, we designed. I mean, we reacted both with architects and contractors, so we, we would. Uh, uh, buy the materials in, in the morning, get the labor, go to site. We couldn't do many projects at the time, but uh, that hands-on approach actually allowed us to understand materials, costs, uh, techniques of building. And that uh, was uh, a bit of an uphill task in the beginning, in the sense that it, it really, really struggled a lot to, to understand. You, don't, you, you didn't make much money, but it was a great learning. Um, and that really helped us because you could take on larger projects, knowing what costs were like, knowing what uh, how materials behave. So, uh, um, and uh, the next step was in challenge is really how do you interpret the site? You know, so all sites are challenging, whether it's a sloping site, lots of trees, with, with uh, you know elements, whether it's uh, early monsoon, whether it's a cold climate, whether it's a uh, you know hot and dry climate. So, how do you really deal with it sensibly? So, when you draw from the Tradition, uh, other new materials that you could use, which are sensible. So we're constantly experimenting. So I think it's important that, that uh, you are nimble, you are you're able to deal, think on your feet, and deal with situations uh, um, as as you want to. Milai, the, the project that we also that we also sort of uh, addressing, uh, was a great learning experience for us. It was actually a project that, that brought us into the land life. Uh, because it, it's built on top of the hill, so we, we actually excavated uh, the top of the hill. It was difficult to get, especially stone up the top. So all the excavation of the pool was actually used in the construction of the building. So what came from the pool was built. It's enormous pools. It's three meters deep at one end. In those days, of course, you didn't have the limit of how deep a pool could be. Now it's the maximum 1.5 meters for residential pool, uh, hotel pools even. So, Bob, uh, uh, we were very frugal in the way we, we actually used those materials and about it. The roofs were either domes, brick domes, which we built in 
in just four or five days. You know, so they're very sensitive using traditional techniques. Uh, the other roots, uh, they are coconut wood, which is a, a completely renewable wood. So, but we didn't think sustainability at the time. All we thought was low cost and what are the materials available close by and what are the building techniques that, that people could do without much difficulty. And that's what came up. And that eventually became one of the 100 best small hotels in the world at that time. And so that immediately threw us into limelight, especially in terms of hospitality, designing the huge hotels. Uh, recently, I mean, since the third project we saw was the Jungle Lodge, uh, that project actually la launched us into the, the lodges, uh, the Mawa Kofi project, uh, where we did it for the Taj. And since Taj is a big brand, we started getting projects from, from other hoteliers. And so we've done 30 or 30 lodges across the country. Uh, but they're all generally small scale. And, uh, the biggest project we've done so far in terms of hospitality is uh, 250 rooms for Club Mahindra in Goa. Um, and Mawakoti was a starting point for us in terms of large design. And the moment that succeeded, uh, it went up. And so how do you combine rustic with, with luxury? That was a big challenge. So, so uh, we wanted to be rustic at the same time, we wanted to be comfortable. So how do you keep that in terms of the, the built-in furniture, you know, the beds all built up, the seating built up, use all the forest materials which are available around, the mud, uh, the bullies, the thatch, uh, local tires, local stone, local artifacts you know, from the villages itself. Uh, so it was just being very sensible and straightforward about design. We managed to achieve that and it was appreciated and so it has a fully air condition, it's got even uh, Essentially, heating in, into the place. Uh, so, uh, it, and yet it disappears. You don't really realize that thing. It still looks extremely you know, rustic, but it's it's luxury. So the rooms are large, it's got a tub in it, it's got a nice dressing area. But they're all very uh, basic in the sense of the use of material, but sophisticated in the way that it looks. So, every seven years or so, we, we call it the design itch, you know, just as we have in in genetics is that your cells change, completely change in your body every seven years. We, we try and push ourselves to actually change the way we design as well. So with our, our style, we don't really have a fixed style of building. We keep on experimenting with things that are interesting. Of course, keep it appropriate to the project. And uh, uh, we grew to a fairly large office at one point in time and now we've downsized. Uh, uh, one is, of course, that we're getting out of touch with uh, the reality and the uh, the need for uh, a more down to earth sustainable architecture. Yeah, so it's a busy, I, I enjoy it. I mean, I, uh, I mean, the projects, a lot of projects that take outside the, the state are, it's more, it's recreation for me as well. So it's, it's not, it doesn't feel like work, especially when I go outside. And I think when you're involved deeply into the architecture of things, uh, time flies, so you don't really feel it as work itself. And um, yeah, it's enjoyable. So uh, it's uh, it's stressful at times. I had a heart attack last year, <laughs> survived it. But uh, it's you slowly you slowly realize that you need to sort of uh, uh, pace yourself in based on what that you can take up and what you just have to let go.